Hi guys, JT here and today I'm bringing you some information on another 10 games in Fanatical's Winter Bundle of December 2023 to help you in picking your 10 games. By using the link provided in the description below, not only will you gain access to this bundle but you also have the opportunity to support this channel. Your support will mean the world to me and I genuinely appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into this. And number 1 we have Golf It. If you're a fan of mini golf, you should check out Golf It. This game has a lot to offer mini golf enthusiasts. It's a serious game that does not rely on cute gimmicks or over the top imagery. The graphics are beautifully cartoony and engaging, and every course looks unique, which keeps things interesting. When it comes to gameplay, there are good and bad aspects. The course design is well done, with a high difficulty curve that provides a satisfying challenge. There's also a course editor that makes it easy to create your own challenging mini golf courses. However, the controls are not great, and there are physics issues that can cause some frustration. One of the best things about Golf It is its multiplayer mode. You can play with up to 12 players, which is perfect for parties or get-togethers. The game has a lobby system that allows you to create or join games, and you can even watch other players while they play. There are also custom game modes such as hockey and basketball that adds even more variety to the game. It is a fun game in its current state. There are some missteps in the control schemes and physics that make it more frustrating than necessary, but the multiplayer mode and course editor make it worth your time. And number 2 we have Summer Catchers, an enchanting pixel art adventure that successfully blends retro aesthetics with modern charm. From the delightful soundtrack to the captivating world waiting to be explored, the game immediately draws you in. However, beneath its cute exterior lies a gameplay experience that might leave you torn. Embark on a journey as a determined little girl in her homemade car, transitioning from frozen winter landscapes to the inviting warmth of the summer ocean. Core mechanics resemble an endless runner, introducing obstacles like icy pits and collapsing bridges. You are armed with tools to navigate these challenges, though success often feels more luck-dependent than skill-based. The game's progression hinges on quirky quests from dubious animals, adding character to the oddball-filled universe. Completing tasks, from planting trees to defrosting frogs, unlocks new tools but also clutters your inventory. The missions vary in complexity, some requiring precision and others relying on luck, contributing to the game's uneven pacing. While the pixel art is visually stunning, the PC version suffers from control issues, making it less enjoyable than its mobile counterpart. Navigating hazards with the mouse or even a controller feels cumbersome, detracting from the overall experience. Despite the frustrations, the game's undeniable charm keeps pulling you back. Every new area, character, or hidden secret is a testament to the love poured into its creation. The occasional shift into adventure game segments or rhythm action sequences adds depth, complementing the outstanding visuals and driving soundtrack. However, if you're eyeing this enchanting journey, consider a tablet or phone for a more enjoyable exploration. And number 3 we have Cart City Nights 2, the sequel to Ludosity's Cart City Nights, propels you into a peculiar world aboard the Starship Frivolity, blending visual novel elements with a casual collectible card game. As you awaken in the freezer, you're thrust into a shipwide card game, the primary source of entertainment. Navigating through over a dozen diverse locations on a massive spaceship, you engage in turn-based card battles with quirky characters. The game introduces an intriguing twist, challenging you to defeat ranked gatekeepers from F to A, each week assigned randomly from the player ranks. A mysterious hack disrupts the system, shrouding the gatekeepers' identities in secrecy. The core gameplay, akin to its predecessor, unfolds as a visual novel with card battles. Exploring different locations and engaging characters precedes turn-based card clashes. Card City Nights 2 introduces significant changes to the card game, featuring a shared board and activation timers, altering tactics from its predecessor. However, the imposition of a 24-card deck limit proves a divisive change, restricting tactical flexibility. The background clicking to discover hidden objects adds an element of tedium, contrasting with the game's otherwise high production values. The addition of online multiplayer, though promising, suffers from lack of active players. Card City Nights 2 boasts a captivating story, amusing characters, and a vibrant soundtrack. Its polished presentation elevates the experience, despite some divisive changes to the card game mechanics. The limited deck size and background clicking may irk some players, but the overall package, including Steam achievements and trading cards, makes it a noteworthy addition to the adventure strategy genre. And number 4 we have Golf Club Nostalgia, a challenging golf game set in a post-apocalyptic earth. Instead of murdering villains, the game focuses on hitting tiny orange space balls through the ruins of the planet. The storyline revolves around humanity's failed attempt to save Earth and their subsequent relocation to Mars, while the privileged few return for leisurely rounds of golf. The game offers two game modes, 
a story mode with unlimited shots and no scorekeeping, and a challenge mode with proper pars for each hole. The latter is recommended for avid golfers as it adds a sportsmanlike element and goal-oriented gameplay. The controls are straightforward, allowing players to aim and determine the force with a mouse or controller. The game provides a zoom function for better navigation and does not involve complex factors like wind direction. The main challenge lies in guiding the ball through each stage, which is usually clear but requires precision. Misjudging the force needed for shots can lead to frustration, particularly in putting situations. However, the game generally avoids becoming overly frustrating, thanks to imaginative courses and a soothing built-in radio station that plays poppy, lo-fi music and listener stories. Despite the grim post-apocalyptic setting, Golf Club Nostalgia offers an extraordinary escape through enjoyable golf gameplay and an immersive atmosphere. Whether you're a golf enthusiast or simply seeking a unique gaming experience, this game provides a refreshing twist on the sport. And yes, this used to be Golf Club Wasteland, but after some legal murder fest, it has been changed to Golf Club Nostalgia. It's the same game, just with a name change. And number 5 we have... Windward a sandbox RPG that places you at the helm of a ship on the high seas, battling pirates and influencing the fate of four factions vying for domination in a randomly generated map. At first glance, you might underestimate its complexity, but Windward is a gem that cleverly conceals its rich core systems beneath an easily digestible surface. Much like the allure of FTL, Windward captivates you with its straightforward delivery of intricate mechanics. As an underwhelming single ship in a vast world, you contribute to a larger 4x strategy style metagame where multiple factions clash for supremacy, a familiar concept to enthusiasts of games like Drox Operative or Space Rangers. Your objective is clear, dominate the map. A dynamically generated world awaits reclamation from pirates and rival factions, and as you progress you'll earn experience, acquire new abilities, purchase ships and crew, complete quests, trade resources, establish cities, and engage in exhilarating combat. Windward's fast-paced and frantic battles become even more thrilling in multiplayer, where strategic teamwork enhances the overall experience. In the world of Windward, you're never the sole hero. Instead, you grapple with constant challenges, particularly from numerically superior pirates, requiring shrewd mastery of your ship's capabilities. Choose between hit-and-run tactics with a light corvette or the robust stand-and-fight approach of a massive ship off the line. Your decisions extend to equipment and crew preferences, influencing your combat style and strategy. While Windward may lack refinement in certain aspects, with zones feeling more like gear checks than unique challenges, the game's pacing and constant challenging pirate invasions leave room for improvement. Despite these considerations, the game's clever trick lies in maintaining an exhilarating experience. The struggle to capture and hold territories remains as enthralling on day one as it does after hours of gameplay, a testament to Windward's enduring charm. And number 6 we have... Lawn Mowing Simulator an unexpected gem from Skyhook Games challenges preconceptions associated with simulator games, proving to be a well-crafted and enjoyable experience. When you first delve into the game, it's natural to approach it with skepticism, especially if you've been let down by simulator games in the past. However, Lawn Mowing Simulator pleasantly surprises with its well-executed components. This game is a well-crafted simulator that caters to those who find joy in mowing lawns. As you start the game, you customize your avatar, choose from basic lawn mowers, and embark on a journey to build your lawn care business. With 31 maps and a dozen lawnmowers, each of distinct features, the game offers variety and progression. Your goal is simple, complete contracts, earn money, and upgrade your equipment or expand your headquarters. The gameplay revolves around surveying properties, avoiding obstacles, and meticulously cutting grass. While the lack of additional tools like an edger is a drawback, the cutting mechanics are satisfying, with realistic patterns left in a freshly cut grass. The game setting in England adds a touch of authenticity to the mowers and currency. Lawn Mowing Simulator's career mode, couple of challenges, ranks, and a free mode provides a well-rounded experience. Although the exaggerated payouts and high interest loans seem unrealistic, they contribute to the game progression. Despite initial skepticism, Lawn Mowing Simulator turned out to be an enjoyable and surprisingly well-made simulator, catering to a niche audience who can appreciate its unique charm and relaxing gameplay. Also if you live in an apartment and just really miss cutting some grass, this could be for you. And number 7 we have... Stranger, a gripping single-player survival thriller horror game, drawing you into its world with intense gameplay and an immersive experience. Stranger injects a unique twist into the single-player horror genre, earning accolades from players for its fresh approach. In this first-person survival horror thriller, you face the daunting challenge of defending your house against a mysterious intruder, the enigmatic Stranger. 
With a variety of modes like Campaign, Nightmare Mode, Custom Night and Hallways, along with multiple difficulty levels and map options, your goal is simple. Survive until 6am when the police arrive, gradually uncovering the secrets shrouding the stranger. The non-linear gameplay guarantees each encounter is unique, ensuring ample replayability and keeping you on edge. The customization feature allows you to upload any image as the stranger, infusing a personal touch into the horror narrative. While some players appreciate Stranger's tense atmosphere and innovative horror approach, others note certain limitations. The simplicity of the gameplay, focus on locking windows and surviving until morning, may lack the depth some seek. Acknowledging the potential for improvement, players anticipate future updates addressing issues like teleporting AI movements and stamina mechanics affecting movement in the house. Stranger stands out as a commendable addition to the horror survival genre, offering a unique and suspenseful experience. Built by a dedicated solo developer, the game's strengths lies in the atmospheric design, immersive gameplay, and the promise of ongoing updates. As the developer continues to refine and expand the game, Stranger holds the potential to emerge as a standout title in a horror gaming landscape, ensuring a night of horror you won't soon forget. At number 8 we have I Am Fish, a delightful physics platformer that offers a unique and refreshing gaming experience. In this game, you play as a fish trapped in a bowl, and your goal is to navigate challenging environments to reunite with your fishy friends who have been forcibly separated. The story revolves around four fish pals, goldfish, pufferfish, piranha, and flying fish, creating an emotional connection with the characters. The gameplay is both fun and frustrating, as you must carefully maneuver your fishbowl through various obstacles, such as stairs and shelves. It requires patience and determination as you strive for freedom. As you progress, you'll transition to different vessels, like a mop bucket, a river, or a glass of water, adding a puzzle element to the adventure. Each fish possesses a unique ability, such as inflating into a ball or gliding through the air, providing diversity and challenges in the gameplay. The game's level design is well-crafted, integrating these abilities seamlessly into the environment. I Am Fish elicits a range of emotions, from fear and frustration to pure happiness when you successfully navigate obstacles and reunite with your friends. The game's creative levels offer moments that are both fun and clever. While some challenges may be frustrating, the ample checkpoints and the option to skip puzzles ensure accessibility for all players. I Am Fish is a charming and engaging game that combines fun, frustration, and fishy adventures. Its cute characters, clever level design, and accessibility make it an enjoyable experience for a wide audience. At number 9 we have Super Knight Riders a love letter to the golden age of 80s arcade racing. Drawing from the Sega classics, Super Knight Riders propels you into a racing adventure across six unique areas. It unfolds in two primary modes, Course, challenging you to navigate through consecutive areas, and Stage, where each area presents varying challenges, including a six-lap goal and more aggressive rivals. The time of day becomes a pivotal factor, influencing the difficulty level. Daytime races provide clear visibility, easing the challenge, while nighttime races heighten the stakes with limited visibility. The dynamic environment undergoes a captivating transformation as you progress, infusing variety into the gameplay. Their seemingly redundant stage mode reveals its worth by introducing escalating difficulty levels and an augmented rival count. This intensification enhances the overall enjoyment, ensuring a more gratifying and enduring experience. Familiarity with the areas brings an additional layer of enjoyment, offering a fresh outlook when explored at different times. Controlling your bike proves effortless, with intuitive controls. Visually, Super Knight Riders exhibits a significant improvement over its predecessor, adopting a polygonal look that pays homage to classic aesthetics. The low polygon style adds charm, though the animation, particularly during turns, reveals some stiffness. Despite its lean content, Super Knight Riders offers an enjoyable gaming experience, best consumed in short bursts to maximize the fun. The low polygon visual style, responsive controls, and nostalgic appeal make it an enticing choice for motorcycle racing enthusiasts. While animation quirks on a modest soundtrack slightly detract, the overall execution remains commendable, beckoning anyone in search of a delightful motorcycle racing action to give it a spin. And number 10 we have Just Die Already, a game where you step into the shoes of an elderly troublemaker who has been kicked out of their assisted living facility. Your mission is to complete various quirky tasks from a bucket list to earn tokens, with 50 tokens securing you a plush retirement. These tasks range from the mundane like eating food to the absurd, such as electrocuting yourself multiple times. The game encourages playful chaos, letting you experiment with physics and interact with the world in unconventional ways. You can taunt characters, dismember them, and navigate bizarre scenarios. 
Your character can't even lose limbs, the head, or torso without dying, leading to comedic situations as you roll around as a crotch. Just Die Already features a sandbox world with secrets to uncover and a solid design. The game runs well, offering bright and colorful visuals, and allows you to roam freely and engage in humorous escapades. It doesn't prioritize tight gameplay, but excels in providing a whimsical and entertaining environment. The bucket list system offers a sense of direction, akin to collect-a-thon platformers, making it suitable for goal-oriented players. While the game's humor is dark and peculiar, its focus on exploration and discovery make it an enjoyable experience. Overall, Just Die Already is an unconventional and amusing game that revels in absurdity. With its focus on playful exploration and creative destruction, it's a perfect fit for those who appreciate sandbox mayhem. And that's all for this bundle. Going through some more of these games in the winter bundle really brings out an interesting personality about the bundle as a whole, with a good mix of indie games. Most of these games that are bundled has a lot of personality, like Stranger and Super Knight Riders. For the price of the bundle, this bundle is very worth it. In any case, kind show support by liking and subscribing to the channel, and I look forward to connecting with you in the upcoming video.